I'm Renee Van Veld. I'm a physical therapist working for SRT Prosthetics and Orthotics. In this video, you'll see my friend Mark doing a variety of basic everyday functional mobility tasks using his below knee prosthesis. These are tasks you should be practicing in your therapy sessions. So don't hesitate to ask your PT and your OT to help you work on these. When you are sitting in a rigid chair and you're standing up using a walker, have one hand on the walker and the other hand on the armrest so you can push up a little bit. When you sit back down, reach back for the armrest. Another thing you'll notice him doing is scooting out in the chair a little bit before he tries to stand up. And that's going to be an important trick as you move toward doing this without a walker. When you are now trying to do this without a walker, notice how he scoots out more forcefully to the end of the chair and he leans forward with his trunk pretty assertively. And when you lean forward with your trunk, that allows you to get your bottom up off the chair a little more easily. In this time, he's using his hand on his knee to stand up and the other hand on the armrest. Foot placement is also important here. You'll see that Mark keeps his feet kind of wide apart. You might also find that you can't bend the knee on your prosthetic side as much as you normally would because of the way that the prosthesis fits. So you will do better if you tuck your other leg under you so that you can use that foot for a little bit more leverage. Trying to get on and off a softer chair like a sofa is a lot harder. So you'll see what Mark tries to do here. He scoots forward and he adjusts the walker and then he doesn't really make it all the way up because he doesn't have his feet in the best possible place. So now he leans forward, he scoots out, leans forward, and then he tucks that left foot under him a little bit more. When he sits back down, he reaches back for the arm of the sofa. Now you'll see in this one, when he's using the cane, he has to lean forward even more to really make sure that his bottom comes up easily. You also wanna make sure that you don't plop when you're sitting down in any chair because you can actually hurt yourself. So now when he stands up without using any kind of device, he really has to lean forward and tuck that left foot under him more to be able to stand up more easily. When you need to pick something up off the floor, the placement of your feet is really important. So you'll see that Mark bends over from his hips as much as much as he does from his knees and he has his foot set out a little bit to the side many people will put their prosthetic foot way out to the side like a kickstand so that they can use it for balance as well as relying on their other leg for strength if you're picking up something a little bit more heavy or unwieldy widen your stance a little bit more and you'll see it in this view where he's able to put his feet a little bit wider apart and really get down there by bending his hips more than his knees. Getting up off the floor can also be a challenge for people. The best case scenario is that you scoot over to a piece of furniture, something that will allow you to use your hands to help you get up from the floor. You could scoot like Mark does, or you could walk on your hands and knees to get over to that piece of furniture. Then one foot goes up and you can push yourself up from there. The interesting point in this video is that Mark uses his prosthetic foot as his up leg, his strong leg, and most people would not feel comfortable doing that at least early on in their rehab. So most people will wanna put their other leg up and use that for their power leg to get up from that floor position. If you don't have anything available to you, you can also get up without that handheld support. 
And you'll see that the way Mark does it is by having one hand on the floor. And then he still uses his prosthetic leg as his up leg. Some people will get all the way over on their hands and knees and stick their prosthetic leg out like a kickstand and then push up using both hands on the floor and their strong leg to help them get up. So there are some different ways to do it. Make sure you practice with somebody else there uh, before you feel confident in doing it by yourself. Now, if you wanna get down on the floor, you can also use a piece of furniture or get down like Mark does by lowering himself on his strong leg. And then he's getting back up in that way by using both hands on his knee for support. So when you are learning how to go up and down stairs, the safest way to start is to go one leg at a time. So you're going to start with your strong leg that goes up on the step and then you bring your prosthetic leg up to meet that step and likewise all the way up the stairs. You will be holding on if there's a handrail to the best of your ability. And if you're using a cane, you can use your cane in your other hand. Or if there are two handrails and you can reach both of them at the same time, you can do it that way as well. When you are coming down, you will step down with your prosthetic foot first, lowering yourself carefully on your strong leg still holding on you'll do one step at a time that way now that obviously takes a while to do and many people want to progress to the point where they can go up and down stairs step over step you are typically able to do that with some practice and with some strengthening so to do that you would just take that prosthetic foot over onto the next step and practice raising your body weight against gravity with the strength of that leg. Start by holding on with at least one hand when you're practicing. When you are starting to practice going downstairs step over step, that's when it gets kind of scary because you're standing at the top of the stairs looking down and it's a little bit more difficult. So you might find that you go upstairs step over step to start, but you still go down one step at a time, especially in unfamiliar environments. As you get more comfortable, you'll be able to do it the way that Mark is doing it in this video. Step over step, he has his hand lightly on the handrail some, but not entirely. And then he's coming down step over step as well, starting with the handrail until he gets confident and then finishes step over step without a handrail. Going up and down curbs is just like going up and down stairs. So you'll typically step down with your prosthesis. In this video, Mark goes up with his prosthesis first as well. You might not feel comfortable doing that. Note that the place where we film this has a curb that's relatively low in nature. If you're using an assistive device still, a walker or a cane, when you're going up, the walker will go up first, the cane might go up first, then you step up to the step, and then the reverse is also true. The walker or the cane will go down first and then you step down off the curb. When you need to go up and down ramps, you just lean forward a little bit with your upper body as you're going up. Use a handrail when you need to, there should always be one. When you're going down, you will want to slow your descent as you go down. You might lean back a little bit. You're going to need to use your leg muscles to slow your descent so you don't feel out of control. And also make sure that you use the handrail. Also note when we shot this video, there was some snow on the ground and that also adds to the fear factor of concern about sliding, especially on a wooden ramp like this one. We also have a video on our YouTube channel about walking in the snow that might help you feel more confident. Remember, never compare yourself to our patient models. They didn't learn how to do this overnight and neither will you. 
they've all practiced extensively to get to where they are. And if you see them in a year, they might be doing a task even better than they're doing it today, just like you will be.